come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. Talk shows usually have guests. We don't. Uh, that's very true. Mm-hmm. So what are we? Well, we're the book club for movies. I mean, I guess unless you count like the guest is each of us who who sits in the hot seat. Yeah. Technically, yeah. the guest seat every week. Yep. And uh, is is questioned uh, mercilessly <laughs> about the movie. That they it, brought. Is, it is a bit of an interrogation. I know. A it's like, bit. why yeah, did you bring this right, movie? Unless, yeah. To, yeah. 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 Especially if it's something that you know you you you're, it's personal to you. Yeah. Sometimes we bring shit. And we're just like, I've never seen this before. Mm-hmm. Like tonight. Mm-hmm. Well, wait, Kayla. we we have to introduce oh. who for okay, everybody yeah. whose first rodeo this is with the world renowned Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Ooh. These are the internet radio superstars, Sean, Michaela, and I'm Colin. And tonight we are interrogating <laughs> Michaela. <laughs> Michaela, uh, raise your right hand. <laughs> and, I, I can't commit until I know and what I'm going to do. Repeat after me. Uh, I promise to tell the. To, I promise to tell you what movie we watched tonight. We got brain scanned. Brain scanned yeah. from the yeah. year 1994. 94. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This uh, one seems like it's been a long time coming. Yeah. Yeah, for, yeah. Yeah. If nothing else, for any horror fan who's ever heard of brain scan or yeah. seen the poster, I feel like I've always seen that poster. The poster's iconic, right? Like it. I mean, it, it, it iconic. Was, uh, it's I think like it's, videos, it's, like it's, grocery store movie section. Yeah it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's known in the fact that I'm like, all right, this movie's called Brain Scan. Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. Uh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it still doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After watching the movie, who specifically yeah. he is? Yeah, uh, but I have other questions. Uh, directed by uh, John John Flynn. John Flynn. Okay, yeah. we know John Flynn. Yeah, he did uh, Lock Up with Sylvester Stallone, which we did on this show. No, not Lock Up. Uh, oh, didn't we? Lock didn't up. oh, we did Tango and Cash. We did. Um, which feels like like the one that did Lock Up. Wait, the one? No, uh, the one that had like two other sequels with. I think no. so. Wait, was Lock Up? Wait, which no, was no, no. That's uh, Lock uh, Up is like a prison drama. Yeah, from the. Like eighty nine. Yeah, like yeah. Wait, we have not watched this on the show. Lock up. We yeah, lock up? no, we have not. Maybe oh. we did it in a previous freak it, show. Iteration? Not while I was on the show. Yeah, we okay. have not. Oh, because it sounds like it. the one Stallone. Well, no, that wasn't a Stallone movie. What was the the one winter prison movie? Where, I see. Oh, I see. I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was a Stallone detox. movie. That detox. Yeah. 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 Okay. Was that mm. Stallone movie? Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. And that's not that. Okay. No, no. It, what is it's lockup, different man? movies. Um. Anyways, he also did Out for Justice, the Steven Seagal movie. Right. Okay. So, okay. That was yeah. The, that was, was like end of for. what was Sp- Stal- or S- uh, Seagal's mm-hmm. like Warner Brothers. Yeah. Uh, no, no. He did Fire Down Below after mm-hmm. that. He I did think. a bunch. Of, that was yeah, all yeah, with yeah, William was, Forsythe. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And yeah. And shit. What was the um, Stallone Schwarzenegger movie where they're prisoners? Escape Plan. Okay. That was the one that had the sequels. That's what you were thinking of. That's what I was thinking of. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Written, written so by anybody specific? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A- Andrew Kevin Walker. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is a big deal. Yeah. On retrospect, now that we know who Andrew Kevin when Walker was is, so that was ninety. Yeah. No, ninety-five. Ninety-five. 95. 95. Mm-hmm. So the year after this. Yeah. Oh, okay. He, we what have an seven. upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, well, hey, serial killer movie, and then we go to killer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but was this his? See something in him, and just was like, it his well, first movie? Take a look. Because I guess it was, yeah. Okay. This is his, this first, his first movie, first yeah. Written like mm-hmm. I'm sure there was something. Yeah, look, brain scan and then hideaway and then seven. Yeah, at hideaway. least produced and then eight millimeter. Scripts. Fuck it. Oh, he yeah. did like the Nick Cage eight millimeter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I know. I've never seen yeah. that movie. Uh, well, we tried to bring it and it got vetoed. So <laughs> it, it was one of the listener request ones. Oh, well, I was gonna say we vetoed in a movie. It was it was a tiebreaker and Hollywood did not want to watch it. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Well, Andrew Kevin Walker then okay. wrote Seven, and uh, we have now seen his first uh, screen uh, produced screenplay. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you can you see the influence of uh, uh, Andrew Kevin Walker on this? It just seems like this feels like one. Like if you talk to him, he'd be like, "Yeah, I wrote this script, and they totally changed it, and I don't really like." I mean, I would be surprised. I believe he wrote a serial killer movie, and they're like, "Let's put video games in it." Yeah, there's something that feels like it, but maybe I mean, he's... it feels my first. I feel like it feels like a first time screenplay, you know. So I'm not. Well, it's it not, not bad, but it feels not wrote, polished. But yeah, yeah. Are we yeah. Basically but the first thing the... that's being made that he wrote, you know. Yeah, first sure. thing being made. Um, mm-hmm. so, starring oh. Oh, Edward Furlong. Edward Furlong. Oh, my God. Every time I have to be exposed to this kid, 
What, what do you have against who, who, Edward Furlong? Because his main method actor. of his main method of acting is yelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like exactly. That's how he gets across everything. Yes, is I'm just going to yell my lines. Mm -hmm. You know, he was actually found on like a street. He corner. was. It was yeah. a soda fountain thing. The yeah. whole Marilyn Monroe thing. We're just like, ah, oh, you, you for Terminator yeah. Two yeah. Yeah. when they did the casting. Is who's going to be young John Connor? And they mm -hmm. literally picked yeah. him off the street. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that gave him a Hollywood career. So this is. After Pet Cemetery Two, yes. Mm. Oh, is he on the wall? We're pretty in, close to it. Where in um, X? Um, what should we call it? What's the American History? American X? History X. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's oh, that's not shit. that's close to this. That yeah. is. Maybe? That might be later nineties, second half of the decade. Probably. Yeah. Because he was still young enough in that one. Yeah. That yeah. Nineteen ninety-eight. Oh, ninety-eight. All right, mm -hmm. there we go. And that's kind of the serious drama movie that yeah. I mean mm -hmm. he was in something else I think that was also but I mean like his yeah. the things that I remember is Terminator Two Pet Cemetery Two, uh, this uh, American History X and the remake of Night of the Demons has he done anything Detroit else? Detroit Rock he, City he was in the remake oh, he was yes yep. he was in the remake of Night of the Demons yeah I've never seen that one yeah we've seen the original we did it here but, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's in the remake of Night of the Demons. So I wouldn't mind watching Eddie that. Furlong, Eddie top Furlong. lines, brain scan, the a kid of the nineties, yeah. yeah, and of yeah. nothing else. Yeah, but this he flamed is, out. Just... Can we all? Can we all just not forget uh, a T two uh, Adventure Through Time or whatever the Universal Studios? Oh, right, yeah, like yeah, yeah, sequel yeah. to Terminator. The one you can only see if, in Florida see at, if you went at Universal there, Studios, it, yeah. which is a great ride. Yeah, or it was a great. Yeah, because I was there. It was like I forty. Saw it. Yeah, it was in 4D. There was a, it's a it's also a live stunt show where there's shit happening on stage. Cool. In front of you as well. It was a really good thing. Like I think yeah. James Cameron helped design. I think he did. He directed, he, directed he directed it. Yeah, directed it. Yeah, he directed it as well. It was yeah. really good. Um, Brain Scan comes at us from a specific era in uh, movie history. Right. CD-ROM gaming. Yes. yes <laughs> which, I love it. Which, uh, like, I remember personally. So, but here's the thing. I mean, like, I remember, you know, I mean, I was a teenager when computers kind of went from when the floppy invented? disk to, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> basically, well, during my lifetime, it seems like I saw. I was going to say, Colin, you have seen the lifespan. From the yeah. Commodore 64 yes. on the Apple 2C all yep. the way to the 386 and the 4. 86 and Man, the Pentium. He's got, and, he's got model numbers. Yeah. Pentium, uh, <laughs> Pentium processors. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> the Intel Pentium. Yeah. Yep. Um, oh this is probably from that era, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean, it feels yeah. like it. Back but, when, again, CD, uh, a CD ROM game was, uh, you had a CD, but it was encased in a little case that you. Well, I've never yeah. seen what they do in this movie, right? Like all the CD ROMs I've again, ever short used. lived, I think. It's yeah. like a. Um, you know, like a CD tray comes out, you put the disc in and away you go. But in this movie, you load the CD in what looks like a jewel case, but yep. then you yeah. insert the jewel case into the mm -hmm. uh, the the drive. Yeah. I've never seen that in real life. No? Okay, because I remember this. Again. Really? Short, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember it. Short-lived, because I think the technology at that point was uh, rapidly progressing in, in in its small way, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. it went from certain well, things. Just like how we had the big floppy disks and the little right. ones. Yeah. Like the way that, how quick that went, yeah. it felt like this was just a, mo a modicum of that time. Yeah, yeah. the sure. evolution of the computer of computer technology just in, yes. like, just, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it went, it, in the for past. a certain amount of time, it went real quick. Mm -hmm. 20 years. This is uh, 20 years old? 30, 30, 30 years, old. years old movie. Yeah, 94. Yeah. Um, so Ooh. this is the era of the, um, it's kind of the cautionary computer tale. Yes. What's, yes, what's, it is. what's yes. the cautionary computer tale according to that you remember? Virtuosity. Well, what's the, <laughs> that was from, I mean, it's going to make you into, it's going to make you into a murderer and desensitize it. You, yeah, which but is which like movie the common argument is like the one you think of when you're like the oh, computers are scary. Um, I don't think a movie. I think more evil maybe, speak. Uh, okay. that, <laughs> really that going back. Yeah, to, are you afraid of the dark? Yeah, this felt like an already are uh, uh, an elongated rated R. Are you afraid of the dark episode? Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I think maybe this was more portrayed on television at the time. Right. Like, well, there was yeah, but not, well, I was uh, for some reason the the net. Comes oh, to mind yes. is like yes, but yes, that was the after this. Fear.com was everyone after go this. Right? Right? Yeah. yeah. The Lawnmower Man. Yes. Right. Yeah, we, virtuosity, we need, right, we I guess. Yeah. We need to Ghost bring the Lawnmower in the machine. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, there was a bunch of movies basically <laughs> yes. telling you, like, the, the burgeoning the technology. Computers yeah. are, are yeah. scary things, right? And here's the horror version of the computers. Um, what is a brain scan? It's 
a CD-ROM video game, mm. w- but it's so immersive that what they say is sharper than real life or something like that in the pitch. Yeah. Um, so it's an immersive simulator game. Yeah, and basically, you're, it's a simulation. They make it sound like you're going to solve a puzzle or solve a murder, but you're really committing a murder. Yeah. So, yeah. so I was actually playing CD-ROM horror mm-hmm. games this time, like The Were Seventh just like Guest this? and Phantasmagoria <laughs> and that kind yeah. of stuff. And I guess, yeah, except uh, <laughs> just text would come was like, you have been murdered. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, game basically, over. Yeah. The, the adventure game. So I guess, I don't know, uh, and it's been a long time since I saw the trailer for this, but mm-hmm. I thought, you know, you hear it's a video game horror movie, mm-hmm. right? He plays a video game. So I guess I thought that there was going to be some kind of... Uh, like actual video gaming right. in this, but something, there isn't. It's right. not something, something that you would play rather than yeah. the character being thrust into a simulation, right? Basically. But even then, I say thrust into into but a not simulation. Tron, like but it, no, right. but it's not. It, but the simulation is like it just. It's just POV shots. Yeah. Yeah. POV, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. But how does the technology work? Or how, what is the brain? What does you, it do? Okay. <laughs> this is nothing. There's gets, nothing. Yeah. There's no <laughs> technology. It, it literally tells us it doesn't matter and not to worry about it. The movie right. says it, it doesn't have to make it sense. It is not The movie important. literally says it doesn't have to make it's sense. It's like it's broadcasting yeah. a signal that. But you have to call a phone number. You <laughs> well, have to. Uh, yeah. Igor, you, uh, <laughs> call one eight hundred five 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 here. Yeah, we're burying the lead here. Igor's in this movie. Igor's guys. in this. Igor, yeah. Igor's first starring role. Yes. Igor, yes. bravo! Yes. Sir. You I, looked great. I'm uh, sad it took us this long to get Igor's how movie did we on the not freak know? show. I know. Igor's been keeping the secret from us <laughs> that he's a movie star. Yes. It's like when you meet someone who's just like, yes, oh, I did that. Oh, back in the day, he I worked with Eddie Furlong and movies. didn't tell us. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like, Igor's our mailman. Long time. Yeah. yeah. Well, he has this. Igor. Um, what, how He'll does Igor bashful. show up? It's like a video phone, but like Igor's like his assistant. video phone assistant. Yeah. yeah. And Igor's like literally a little like monster man that shows up and is like, you have a phone call. And he says, on his yes, TV. Ma- he yeah. says, he, first he says, yes, master. And then yeah. he holds the phone out <laughs> yeah. with a phone call. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like great because. Ma- almost like, here's the mail. Yeah. yeah. And it's a voice his, activated system. His role system. hasn't changed much over the years. No. <laughs> Igor is always going to Igor. Here's the Igor. This must feel like animal log to him compared to like yeah. wow he had video phones in the 90s you know yeah. i know i thought this technology back when i saw it you know i mean because it did exist you know mm-hmm. um, right yeah when it showed up there was a video call i'm just like holy shit well, this and, is really yeah. advanced and he's for- live streaming his neighbor getting undressed to his his tv as well oh yeah, yeah. yeah. or did he record it and he was playing no that's right no, he was, was live. watching yeah. yeah um yeah, because I'm like, that, I don't That's think that could happen. Yeah. Like, we don't have the cords right. for that. So I guess there had been Videodrome was in 83, right? Mm-hmm. And that was the idea that there was a signal buried within the, the blanking signal of the television set that could hypnotize you. Mm-hmm. Basically... You know, that's what's happening. They did. They, seriously, it is just a, a, they took Videodrome. Instead of giving you a tumor, it just, yes. you know, <laughs> alters your reality mm-hmm. and and gives you this video yeah. game. Or it's not a video game. Uh, no, a simulation. You, you mm-hmm. call the phone number, which, what was it? 1-800-555-FEAR. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then when you're on the phone, brain scan shows up on your TV yeah, with the logo and the character, which we'll get it, into. Right, it's like instant connectivity. Once yeah. you call it, you're in. I thought yeah. it was like a modem, you know, like yeah. you had to dial in, but there was yeah. no dial right. in tone. But no, he always yeah. has to call the number for it to show up on right. his on his yes. monitor. So um, and then he gets like his virtual reality he talks through to his brain. It's like yeah. it's on the way. It's, yeah. it's like they know everything about you. Right off the bat, as soon as you call mm-hmm. them, okay. Like, well, we know who you are. We know where you live. I We're sending it right now. Confused a little bit mm-hmm. about the movie okay. now. So we learn about Brain Scan uh, through Fangoria Magazine. God bless him, uh, mm-hmm. which features a lot in this movie. Yes. So yep. nice product placement. You know that the reporter from Fangoria is going to visit the set and all this. Yeah. You're going to get all yep. this coverage. Featuring a Sleepwalkers cover, by the way. Yeah. A yeah. nice yeah. close-up shot on a Sleepwalkers Bravo. cover. Yes. So the idea is it's in, there's an ad in Fangoria, so the horror nerds will find this, and yep. it's a horror video game. And so you call the number. <laughs> Those horror nerds, they're easy. We can manipulate them. Yep. Mm-hmm. We call the number, and by calling the number... The guy who answers the phone, like you think you're going to get a recording, but you actually get the guy, right? Yeah. The, the, what we later realize is the, the brain scan demon or whatever, but he answers the phone. And during this phone call, I don't know if you remember this, mm. there is a moment where there's a bunch of flashes of light and Edward Furlong appears to have a seizure. 
Yes. Yeah, it's like he gets scanned real quick. Yep. Okay, over the... Uh, he's just sitting... In, he's not the phone up to his ear or no. anything. He's no, like a light talking comes to his, down. Yeah. He has a little seizure, like you yep. said. And then he's like... Oh, like he experienced an orgasm at that point. Yep. Okay. Like, yep. So... I want more. We're going to spoil this movie... Uh, just so, so you know, uh, so it is spoilers years old. Yeah. we haven't already, yeah. Yeah. right? So we're we're assuming that you have seen the movie yeah. at this point. But I think in order to talk about this, yeah. I need to spoil uh, where the movie is going to go. But I love Colin's intro to the spoiler every week, like it's never happened. I know, but it's just so for the <laughs> new, like, like new we've never said this before. New, <laughs> if if this right. is your first you're, time going see, through, Colin, businessman, Colin is always thinking about the new listener. <laughs> so at this point in the movie. Knowing where it's going to go, yeah. this seems like a good splice point, if you know what I mean, to... Right. right? But... You're correct. This isn't actually the uh, moment that the brain scan begins. Mm -hmm. What is the point of this, then? What happened there, and why did this scene take place? Because you think at the end of the movie, you'd connect back right. to this moment, but it doesn't. It connects back to the first time he actually got the CD and booted it up. Am I right? remembering this right? Yeah, I think uh, that's. Good. I mean, that's, uh, all right. Because when he, I can at the only end go of the movie, based on all right. You brain have to go scans on, on the clothes. television. You have to go based on clothes, because what he's wearing at the end, he hasn't been wearing before. So I, I get what you're asking, but I don't. I would have thought that the moment you said was the moment you could splice was actually the moment you could splice. Yeah. Is it not? No, they come in okay. like when. As far as I remember it, like he when he put the disc in, he yeah. got the that's when he saw the brain scan on the television. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the moment we come back to, because I suppose it wouldn't make any sense for you to call a number and them to just freely give you this uh, right. interactive experience. You got to have the CD-ROM. Yeah. Somehow you got to pay for it or something. But he apparently doesn't. I don't know how yeah. the commerce of brain scan actually works. Well, I don't think it matters based on the we get a fucking digital demon that comes in so i <laughs> yeah. don't think i don't think the payment I think it's plan a quite thing. Yeah. i don't think it quite matters yeah but well you also, have to buy like, at least the first disc the, the yeah, game right. is like there's going to be four discs but you're already in the game right. at that but point also where we so end up at the end the of first the movie counts. doesn't match up with anything previously in the movie he's not wearing any of that if we're going by that really when he woke no, up and he's he not wearing that no and all that stuff sitting next to him and all that i thought that that's was the same and i get what you're saying with that but if we're going by like his clothes are not the same, which oh. they should be if you're going to do that I thing. I can't remember. Because he's wearing the, the red checked mm -hmm. um, flannel over his... Which he wasn't thing. wearing, you're saying, in any of the earlier no, time? Okay, wasn't so wearing then, then this movie he gets even been. more perplexing. To, to do that yeah. connection yeah. for mm -hmm. it should have been. Why they didn't, I don't know. But I get what you're saying. All right. So the tale is going to follow the adventures of young Eddie Furlong mm -hmm. playing a character named Michael Brown? Bauer. Uh, Bauer. Bauer, yes. Brower. Mm. And oh, Brower, yeah, mm. yeah. there's the the movie begins with a lot of uh disconnected uh sequences. They're all edited like out of order. Mm. We see a dog running through a yard. Mm -hmm. yep. We see a uh person crawling across broken glass yep. on a rainy night. We see someone being wheeled into a hospital. Mm -hmm. yep. Was there one other one? That I was like, I, I don't know what it. the hell we're looking at. There's yeah. like close ups of him in the hospital bed. Yeah, yeah. We get these images where you're just like, it's close enough or mm -hmm. it's obscure enough. You're just like, oh. And happy. it's bizarre. We see a purse uh, uh, skewed out on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and moving across that again. And the other images you saw or you said, mm -hmm. um, and we're just like, all right, how does this all come together? How does it all come together? It all comes together in that Edward Furlong and his mother were in a car accident very early on, uh, mm -hmm. early on in his life in which his mother died and he was. Uh, injured. Mm -hmm. He had a, uh, his knee was all. Uh, we, it we was get, gross. Yeah, yeah. We get bone protruding mm -hmm. from his leg earlier on in the movie. So um, there was an accident where he lost his mother earlier on in the movie. And so this has now put him in a position where, as a teenager, I think he's in high school. He's in high school. He's in high his, school. His dad has gone a lot on business and everything, but they make enough money where he has a, a fucking loft attic, a three story house. It's a three it's story house. Huge. He's got an attic bedroom, which is basically an apartment. Yeah. yeah. And it's like one of those cool 90s, like loft apartments. Yeah, you know exactly kid, what I'm right. saying. Every yes. kid who's, who watches it is jealous of yes. having that room. Yes. I, found, I found myself just looking at all the set decoration right? at the room every it time. It is. You look there, around, yeah. you're like, oh, he's got that. He's got that. He's, he's got, got the got... like bubble lamps. He's got all the right. 
right. Desk he's got toys, all the video, imagine. all the yes. movies that you, he, yep. you probably want to watch are yep. in the background on the shelf. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got a, yeah. a, a computer set up so he can, you know, because this is what he does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And across the, the or next to him, he has a neighbor. Mm-hmm. And so, across, yeah, what, always the neighbor. how are we introduced to the, the pair of them? Because I think we're basically introduced to him waking up from him a dream and then lying on her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But. There's a dynamic that's happening here that I guess you're trying to read is like, okay, here's the skeevy guy, you know, peering yeah. at his is neighbor. Is the filmmaker trying to make this more consensual to make him less creepy? Yeah, I don't understand why this even exists in this movie. This whole this dynamic plot, yeah, this whole I, I relationship between the to. two of them, yeah. At it, least th- this version of him watching her, but her right, knowing about it, right. I guess it doesn't. It, it doesn't, doesn't have to. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have any impact on the movie. So. Is this raising some kind of stakes because it's possible she'll be a victim and all this stuff right, later but on? Why, yeah, but, but why the weird back and forth of I watch you, you watch me? What is right. that? What does that benefit this movie at all? I think yeah. we're going to have to spoil this too because I'd like to go <laughs> through this relationship to the yeah. end where you're like, yeah. what the fuck? Okay. Yeah. So he watches her undress mm-hmm. but and, and tapes it. Yes. yes. So uh, that's why I was thinking, like, does he have a library of this? But I think right. we're only shown the one night. But right. the impression I got from watching it is that she knows he's watching yes. her. Yep. And so she's doing this in, right. on purpose. Right. So you're like, oh, OK, yep. these these folks have like a like. So do they know each other? Yeah. Was the first question that I they right. have. Mm-hmm. And when it when they do interact, it feels like, yeah, they do. And they have known mm-hmm. each other for a, a little bit of time before this, so this you're is saying as the movie goes on, this yeah. is yeah, like yeah. the impression so that you're getting. Like w- the moment we're introduced to them, um, it ends up being a thing that they do for each other. Like they kn- they know each other's doing what they're doing. There's like he's the- filming her but she's also doing it for him in some regard yeah and then later there's the implication that she's taking pictures of him in his yeah. room there's yep. that yeah so they are voyeuristic she, she even says i knew you were watching me because right. i watch you too yeah, yeah. so they're voyeurs but this is other. like a romantic thing yeah it's it, how, it, it, but it's it, it, weird right. it's how it's in, a, in a weird way <laughs> yeah it is it is uh without you it's but like a thing why? they do without talking why about each other. why do they have to be freaks why can't they? i mean it's great that they found each other but like <laughs> well, at least right, they took each question, other all right freaks found each other do we have to question it come on let them <laughs> I, be in love I, i'm questioning it from a narrative standpoint of why is this in this movie why what does it like to titillate the viewer okay i uh, sure sure I and guess. Then and, make, and then they're it. like, it'll be weird that if like she it. actually gets off on him actually watching, <laughs> which kind of condones the idea that you can watch girls in there. Uh, I think the bedroom. point here right. is that it was consensual both yeah. ways. But, okay. But take that away from it, if nothing else. Right. But here's, but here's the thing. So everything that you said that you've learned about her and his relationship, because yeah, all of a sudden he goes over to her house mm-hmm. to talk to her. Right. You know, like yeah, can you ask you know Amy or whatever to come down, or maybe that was the actors. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, talking to her parents, I'm like, have they? Is this the first time he's ever gone over right. and actually talked to her? Because his friend is saying like, go for it, dude. You got to go over and talk to her. I don't think it is. They probably grew up like across from each other. See, I was wondering yeah. about that. For, for I think that I think there's it's been that this thing forever. She comes over to his house a couple the of times. The parents were just like, "We yeah. know you. We don't exactly agree on yeah, 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 this, yeah. but we yeah. know you. So right. come on in." But by the end of the movie, all of that never actually happened. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now you have to go like, okay, it was him and her mm-hmm. uh, taking pictures of it or whatever. Right. We, we know that he's looking at her. And at the end of the movie, when he finally does like go to talk to her for, mm-hmm. I think the first time, yes. is, right? All right, is that what? No, <laughs> I think is, so. Is that what you guys got? Yeah. I don't. I don't think so. But continue on. Well, the only reason I guess I say it because of the buildup that his friend is saying, you know, like go for a dude. You need to talk to her, otherwise, yeah, some well, other guy. I, so it's it, like he's it, working to up to, her, to talk or to her. I need to officially ask her out. Because there can be that whole relationship without officially asking I her don't. to be like, again. I'm. I don't know if any I don't know either. True, there's that I, one I scene. Feel like they've they've known. They've talked. I feel like there's a thing there, but to officially ask her out is the thing. Well, I guess the the thing that adds t- to the way that I read it that they had never actually spoken was okay. there was a scene where he's watching her on on video and he calls her and he watches her answer the phone. And then he chickens out and mm-hmm. he, you know, 
hangs up right. on her. So he happens. just gets to see her reaction on the, the videotape, mm-hmm. which to me tells me he's working up to actually talking right. to her for right. the first but time. But in that regard, but she knows that it's him. But or she knows that he's watching at that moment. Because she That's looks out the but window. So he's yeah. working up to talk to her, but they have this consensual back and forth of filming each other in I place, think, but, but they ha- he hasn't talked to her. Now, I the filming so, okay. thing was also like established during the part of the movie that no longer exists. Yeah, yeah. However, at the end, when he finally mm-hmm. does go up to her and mm-hmm. ask her out, mm-hmm. she does have pictures of yes. him. So yes. she has actually been taking yes. pictures so of him. I think, uh, but I think that's the relationship until he talks to her. Is that's that- fucking weird. That's so backwards. <laughs> I, agree. I, agree. I agree. You've never had a conversation, but yet you have an understanding that you're but doing this I, mutual but I think, freak but I think they've ritual. Talked. I think there okay. is something before that. <laughs> well, I, don't, then- I don't think it was just this. <laughs> And that the the back and forth is I I tape you you tape me I think there was probably something more I have nothing let that me says make this it even true. weirder okay <laughs> go for it and that is he finally <laughs> gets up the the courage to ask her out and she's like I don't think so and you're like what you the fuck have was been that? taking your clothes <laughs> off in front of the your oh, right your window so <laughs> right yeah which is fine like it, it's, so it's her much. decision that's fine <laughs> if she wants to say no that's fine but yeah. but she acted feel, disgusted right that but it he feels even like asked. there's been a mutual she was thing like, here uh, no right. like no, she based had, on yeah. the mutual thing that we thought was going yeah on. right she's like i don't think so i'm like then what are you doing it what keeps getting happening? weirder because then he but, she's like he's like but you but know there was also does anyone remember, there was a, uh, i think it may have been one of like the it was an hbo thing where, where it was just like uh rosie perez it may have been like a New York stories type of thing on HBO where there's a, a relationship between a man and a woman who meet on a subway. Don't say a word to each other, but they, uh, based on the hand movements on a pole, they get off on each other and, and have a relationship on that, but they don't say a word to each other. And when he tries to, she's disgusted by it, but the how do they develop this language? But, 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 it, it, it's like um, uh, a feeling, a moment that happens on the thing. I, I need upon. more information. This is not making sense. I'll find sense. it. I'll find it. There's an HBO. I'll find it and I'll send it to you because it was a whole thing. I, um, I, I do not believe that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but there was a whole thing where there was a relationship based on that. And when it went outside of that, that's when everybody got turned off. So maybe they had this relationship okay. based on the mutual spot. Applying a lot of psychology anything, yeah. to this yeah. plot line that, that doesn't mean anything. Hey, I know, people but, are weird, Michaela. I know, this, but it doesn't matter happen. to this movie, though. Well, that is only, true. The only thing. <laughs> that is true. We do have to get back to the movie. Yes, but the, right, the, right, movie. Right, right. the only thing the that movie. I could possibly, I don't know, maybe you'll disagree with this. The only And, and I think that relationship did get even weirder mm-hmm. after that because then she's like, uh, maybe I'll think about it. And then she kisses him and you're like, what the... Yeah. Okay. But yeah, don't do that. what it might have done for the movie, right, mm-hmm. is the same thing because... Uh, and and I, uh, Kevin, Andrew Kevin Walker did a, a rewrite on Fight Club and this is why I'm kind of bringing right, it because right, right. Fight Club has a similar third act twist that happens yeah. and I think the idea of both movies is that these introverted um, characters should have the first thing they should have done is go talk to the girl, but instead yeah. they indulge this like uh, you know fantasy mm-hmm. life, and then it's like here's how that fantasy life plays out, and it's bad and horrible, right? And everything would have been better, may probably if you would have talked to the girl in the first place, mm-hmm. right? So I don't know if that's a Kevin Andrew Kevin Walker, thing, right? But right. That could be why her plot is in the movie. Okay, it's saying yeah. All right. So, all right, now we're back and way up yeah. to the beginning of the movie. Subway. <laughs> all right. It was an HBO. Oh, he got it. Anyway, I called it Subway <laughs> Stories. Oh. Uh, and hers was part six, Love on an A-Train. Go look that up. <sighs> it's a whole relationship based on no communication, but a mutual um, attraction on a subway train. It's about... Did they interview both parties for this? No, what? No, or is not, this one guy telling no, this a story? No, a movie. This, I okay. mean, it, it, it's like an HBO like miniseries where it's like short films. Basically. Right, right, right. But I'm saying who all participated in this? What like, Like, is this just one guy telling a story about how he had this relationship? Because then I have no reason no, to believe I, that this, this ever really happened. You know what I'm saying? He's saying yeah. it's a fictional, it's a fictional story. Thing. Oh, it's like okay. A, no, it's a fictional short. It's like a bunch of filmmakers oh, getting together. Okay. And they're like, let's do New York stories or Subway gotcha. stories. Okay. Yeah. Weird, different stuff. No, no, no This no, is it, the one okay. about the two people who never speak, yeah. but have a moment. But have a, yeah. a sexual moment on okay. a subway train, and they try and replicate it, and they do it a couple times, but then he tries to speak to her, and she's like, no, that's not 
Well, my kink okay. is is just between this. It's a whole thing. But look it up. It's, right. It was interesting. Um, <laughs> so the brain scan thing that, that happens, uh, we assume when he puts the disc in the, he gets the disc mm-hmm. by mail. Yes. And puts it in the CD-ROM and he plays it. Mm-hmm. And... So I think you're supposed to, so the way that he sees it first is like he's seeing through the eyes of, or, you know, he's having a dream and the dream is a standard slasher movie thing, which gives, I think, John Flynn the opportunity to do his Halloween steady cam going through the yep. house. Yeah. Black uh, love killer nice. from yeah. Dario yeah, 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 Argento, which, a little bit of that in there. The way it came across this movie is I was on the slasher movie subreddit and people were talking about like, it was a threat of like forgotten slasher movies. Mm. And they mentioned this and I was like, that. I'm pretty sure that's not a slasher movie. I guess if this you count this one, this one scene, it yeah. qualifies it as a slasher movie. So yeah. it's, and I guess because you're in the 90s, you're already like, you know, there's been 20 years of slasher mm-hmm. movies before this. And so they're just drawing from the imagery. It's like old. You've seen it. We're just incorporating it in our new mm-hmm. idea. But here's the throwback. <laughs> yeah. um, so a man is murdered. We don't see who did it. Mm -hmm. The implication, of course, is going to be that, like, this game is bad for you. Mm -hmm. You never should have picked up the phone in the first place. It's hypnotized you, and now you've become a serial or a killer. Well, how do we get that? Go ahead. Well, there's a well. If you're like a horror fan or a freak show fan, there's a whole scene in this that might be kind of triggering for you mm. because the well, the principal was like yeah. interrogating him, being like, that, "How well, could you watch that sick that's shit?" Like say. all the stereotypical he stuff you've heard go, as a horror he fan. Even go that uh, naked in yeah. his accusations. He's like, "What is this like? Lighting up a marijuana cigarette? Or yeah, watching a porno movie and raping, raping someone? someone? Yes. And she's like, well, okay." <laughs> Big jump. Yes. Not at all Big related. Jump. Horror movies oh. lead to murder. So this is, and we're yeah. saying. Horror movies lead to murder. Yep. Porn leads to rape. Yeah. And, so this uh, is. A, smoking leads to marijuana. Yeah. This is a criticism. The movie yes. then is uh, Andrew yeah. Kevin Walker's criticism of that type of yeah, uh, uh, policy. Yeah. authority making. figures to question that. Yes. But. The uh, MPAA loved their moral superiority oh, take in this did. movie, I'm sure. <laughs> but, but what is the moral of the movie? It, it actually, well, I guess that's the thing. It yeah. makes the, the, the victim, the user, into a killer, but it doesn't actually count because it's not actually real. It's mm-hmm. a game. Yes. You know, so I mm-hmm. guess that's kind of... You're not actually committing to like, right. but the I guess the movie is going to play but, out well, like well, it yeah, is. Physically. We don't know that. But mentally, are you committing? To doing something like because that? Because then you're having, I guess it's a, like the Grand Theft Auto thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's like you well, are okay, living that, vicariously well, doing this is, criminal right, this acts. If there was a game where you were in, in, in a world where there we have a lot of games where we kill people. That's mm-hmm. just kind of where we are. Um, yeah, uh, in a world where there was a game where you could be a serial killer, but you had to try and cover your tracks. Yeah. How do you feel Which about that? Which it morally Until implicates dawn? you as uh, well, I mean, yeah, but maybe <laughs> you know? maybe more so in vain of this where you are taking the POV and you are stabbing mm-hmm. someone and like uh, how, how does that make you feel because it's like it, a serial killer the, simulator. The, right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. how do you did, are you disgusted by that because I'm interested in that I don't in, think in it's that different where, from any other video game that already exists so I can't that, well, that, would be that my line de- is so razor thin yeah, exactly. that, that, that would be my defense of it because I'm interested in that I don't want to kill anybody yeah but, but to, like to be uh, in look that, how normalized Call of Duty is that's right. that is like mass murder right. that video and game that's I'm, that, yeah. I mean that's what I'm kind of trying to say yeah. is just like I think the in a world where we're interested in doing stuff like that I don't think there's much difference in being interested in 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 kind of that kind of psychology in a game where you're just like you're the serial killer. How would you do it? But also like how would you cover it up? How would well, you escape? I mean, I guess what that the is the. But then that leads to the is this kind of um, you know training your psychology to normalize. Mm killing somebody right you know which is i guess the right. argument that's leveled right. against video mm-hmm. games and that um, is the like it's warping our children's minds like that is the thing mm-hmm. for does it, the yeah. movie have a statement on that it feels like it sets up starts to and then but just doesn't really and then it's more interested it. yeah. in the actual yeah uh acts of it and yeah. the whole thing yeah, yeah going forward because yeah. i thought for sure like that principle and basically you know speaking to the mpaa's like terms and conditions you know i thought he was going to be like more of a through line throughout the movie kind of commentating on that stuff but mm-hmm. no that gets dropped no, immediately he becomes yeah. like a, a target yeah. like later mm-hmm. on um so 
it turns out that the dream that he had, Furlong had, mm-hmm. of committing this murder, this there's murder, actually yeah. a dead guy. The yep. guy is really dead. And it's yeah. the first murder that's ever happened in this town, yeah. according to local news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, very first murder. Yeah. This town must have like 50 people in it. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is going to no involve murder. the, uh, now the cops are on the case. And who do we have as the lead investigator? Frank Langella. Yeah. Nixon himself. Yeah. I know, but see, Nixon, had he been Nixon... Uh, like, cause he did that on stage. I think before there was a movie, right? Oh, did he? Like, yeah, the Frost Nixon. Yeah, I think, just mm-hmm. I think both of those guys Probably. did that on a stage before. They, but I was like, I, I remember when I saw I saw this in the theater, and I was like, I mean, Frank Langella was always mm-hmm. the king of vampires, and you know, and, to, and Dracula yeah, to, you, to me, yeah, because that never crossed my mind in this. But yes, you're right. I, f- I forget about that. Uh, yeah. He's in another movie that I've been thinking about bringing to the freak show for a long time, The Box. Yeah, is He's that in the box. Any, right? I haven't seen it. I, I don't know. I don't either. know what's in the box. I saw it. It's curious. from the director right. of uh, what was it, Richard Kelly, uh, Donnie Darko. Oh, uh, okay. Rich, uh, Richard E. Kelly. No, was it? No. Yeah, Richard. No, that no. sounds like the Ally McBeal no. guy. Yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. David E. Kelly. Yeah. David E. Kelly. David E. Yeah. Yeah, that's, Maybe that's it's Richard Kelly. Kelly. Richard I, don't know. I think Richard yeah. Kelly is that. <laughs> David E. Kelly is that. Richard Kelly is that. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't seen that movie. That's the that Marsden and Cameron, Cameron Diaz, Diaz, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 I'd yeah. be interested. Based on an 80s I don't know era Twilight Zone episode yeah, right. that I, yeah. I kind of liked. Um, but I remember thinking at that point, I'm like, what? You know, is Frank Langella hard up that he's taking movies like Brain Scan? But I guess he's Frost Nixon was still yeah. in his future. Um, yeah. So he's in this as the detective who's now tracking down who did it. And of course, that's going to put him in the orbit of. Uh, you know, the kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the, I mean, what do you think of the detective? And we should mention when he, kills, the kid here? when he kills this guy, he cuts his foot off and, t- this, and then yeah. it's very true. Well, yeah, the foot shows up in the freezer. Right. So the kid is, so Edward Furlong sees the murder on the TV and then he's yeah. like, I'm going to go to my fridge. And then he ends up like the foot is in his fridge. So mm-hmm. he realizes the direct connection between what he's been doing and the murders that are happening right. in his town. Yep. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Mm. We're 36 minutes into this podcast, and we have to mention the other lead character in Brain Scan, the one I mean, who's on the cover. It does. It takes him a bit to show mm-hmm. up. And also, I question why he is the avatar for this. Okay. Well, let's get into <laughs> who are we talking about? The trickster. Who is the trickster? <laughs> It's anyway, Drop Dead all, Fred with Freddy Krueger yeah. humor. Basically, yeah. And yeah. I. Oh. Who plays Wait. it? Who plays the, the, oh, well, the trickster? Oh, I gotta look you guys' name up. He was, I looked him up yeah, to see he didn't if he have was anything credits. else, and no. I'm just like, I don't it's know. Like T. Ryder Smith. Yeah, yeah it is. is coming yeah. To my Smith. Mind, he but... reminds me of. There's a guy who plays a character in, I think, Deep yeah, Space. Yeah, T. Ryder Smith. You are correct. He play. There's a guy who plays a, uh, an alien in Deep Space Nine. Who's got sort of a, a, a more of a nothing face, where it feels like if you put a, a bright red. Uh, mohawk and, and yeah. uh, thing on him. You know, while character. we were watching it, I'm like, he pl- he he feels like a character from a Star Trek episode. <laughs> yes. He does. He, uh, that that was yeah. my thing because he feels like a Star Trek. Did character. you by any chance? Oh, because your- it's the one guy who does look like him. Um, I forgot who plays him, but he's got kind of a mohawk. And yeah, it's like he, a big pompadour mohawk. Yeah, 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 red. He's an alien. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a Star Trek. Character. Um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm curious because the makeup effects were by Steve Johnson, mm-hmm. yes. who also did some of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Yeah, uh, this is a naked <laughs> callback to Freddy. He's Kruger. also like, you should act like oh. Freddy for this. Yeah, yeah right. It's... I mean. With half the charisma, my God, it's just, yeah, mostly, yeah it's not yeah, working. Much. Well, describe to me the personality of the trickster. I mean, what? Why, he, well, okay, why is he the trickster? Why does he look like this? And what does it have to do with yeah, the game? He, I, none he's of it- the logo for the game. He comes out of the screen like the ring, and he is indestructible. You can't kill him. Yeah. And um, he demonstrates that by breaking all of his fingers backwards, gouging his eyes yeah, this out. Is, this is the Freddy like, Look at the stuff yeah. I can do. Yeah. Yeah. Burning me. Yeah. They've tried drowning yeah. me. Yeah. But I yep. just keep coming back. Yeah. And now. Um, like, ah. but, but, and at this point, we're all just thinking, but why but are why you are here? You? Yeah. <laughs> right. Why, but why, but are, you why are you here? I don't need to know what you are. Why I need to know why you're here. The representation of this game. Like, yeah. I thought I was getting a virtual reality game, and now I have like my this imaginary friend character right. popping up. Right. And like, it's fine to have a representation of the game but why do you look the way you do yeah why do you act the way you do yeah yeah it's because it he's not like, human yeah it's right. weird yeah he's a, he's an interesting character who is not entirely explained as to why 
why you are the representation you I are. I don't like this in movies. <laughs> I don't I don't like like a It helps if it comes mm, from the source of yeah. of like your brain scan thing, but he doesn't relate to the game. Right. In a specific like, way. Like I don't and, like Drop Dead Fred and I can't handle that kind <laughs> of like invisible friend weird right, energy, right, right. yeah. Well, I think the movie violates its own rules mm-hmm. um in at least two scenes Ooh, that, yes, that irritate I hate it when this happens and this is where it kind of takes all credibility away from mm-hmm. it. Um there's a scene where the trickster is left. So like, okay, I get it. You've been hypnotized. Mm-hmm. Yep. You see the trickster. Yep. yep. Okay. You walk out of the room, but the trickster hangs out watching your TV yes. and eating all of your it's funny, uh, food I guess. because that's a <laughs> right, funny right. thing to yeah. do. Cause, Cause he's a nuisance and he's going to do things that bother you. Right. Or, or just, uh, right. Or just a, a, a part of your life. You're just like, Please don't do that. So you're saying that that's okay in the in the in the rules of the. To me, it was like you can only see. I think you should only like see it. the trickster from Edward Furlong's point of view. I agree. Yeah, but then I guess we're seeing the whole thing by the point of view. And the other one was at the very end of the movie. The trickster shows up after we've been told everything that we have seen up until a certain point yeah. mm-hmm. was the brain scan hypnotism yes. and didn't actually happen. Right. right? You did this right. virtual reality thing and it's over. It's over. Hypnotism and he shows up. But he yeah. shows up right. afterwards. I'm so like, the oh, you rules just... are fast and loose mm-hmm. yeah. for, this, um, for this character. So there's a uh, so the the way that the plot structures itself here is like well what are we going to do for the rest of the movie we're going to give you four CDs that you have to play yep. that are going to arrive in sequence mm-hmm. um, and if you don't complete the sequence it can be uh, if harmful it, if you don't complete it in time it can be harmful we don't get any consequences from that no. right so it doesn't particularly matter I'm not even sure what the consequence was. Mm-hmm. So, I think we'll they know. said maybe we'll brain damage could, in that first, like, you have yeah, to do all four of these. Yeah. But even that was not, you know, uh, a real thing, right? That was once yeah. he's hypnotized, this is what he's understanding about right. what this game is. There's going to be four of them. There wasn't. Mm-hmm. There's just the initial game, right? Um, so the, the second one is you got to eliminate the witness. He's timed. That's the game. You have so many 45 minutes to go out. And kill the witness. Right. He and wakes the timing up. never really comes in. No. We're only showed that at the end and say, "Oh, he completed it." The timing never comes into play. Yeah, and I think on that when he records himself, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because Furlong's having this kind of like, "Am I actually doing this?" Right. He what records does he say? I'm 16 up. years old and I'm scared to death. Is that <laughs> yeah. what he said? I, he's yeah. like, "I'm 16 years old. I'm scared to death." But if I'm the killer, this is my confession. Yeah. That's like that's a that that he went from one end to the other end of the spectrum real quick. Yep. For a 16 year old who would not know to do that. Yep. These 16 year olds are not confident in shit. And but apparently, Sean, he's got to parent himself. His dad is absent. You're, you, know? you know what? You're right. Right, mm-hmm. right. And the, the parent, his dad is gone, yeah. so he's got to figure this shit out all on his own. And the trickster, uh, so so then he ends up like apparently off screen. He kills his best friend because mm-hmm. that was yep. the witness. Uh, mm-hmm. The next one, he is sent to retrieve a clue. I think that was the third one, like, right? Rub a clue like there's footprints. Get rid of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then the trickster calls the detective, like who's investigating the crime, yeah. and tips him so, off. All right, so yeah. we're outside of. Our main character at this point. Right. But this is all part of the game. Yeah. Right. So it's all right, technically. Fine. So it all yeah. fair game. Okay. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Yes. So there's chase sequences and all that. And then he ends up having to, he, I think he ends up, um, he uh, kills the uh, principal mm-hmm. who was uh, militant against uh, horror movies. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is the one. Because he has like, a horror oh, club you at school. Marijuana, and then you also watch porn and rape people. Yeah. Yes. Like, but it's that well, guy. Well, it also sets that up as like the, the principal really wants to get him, you know, like, yeah, I right. got you. You know, you're the right. Kid, you're the one I knew because of the horror movies you right. watch. You'd be a killer. But also, all right, I, I'm gonna put this out there. The principal is also setting up a, a boundary that is not crazy. He's just like, you will give it to me, and I will decide if it is good for your horror club. Mm-hmm. Now, what what he decides is good or not is, you know, just like, well, fuck him. But also, like any authority figure would be like, 
give it to me. I'll decide, you know, I'll yeah. look at the things and maybe it's good. This and is shocking to hear you say this, John, because I mean, again, you know, as a parent and as an as older parent, parent yeah. you're not yeah. the audience for this movie. The audience for this movie was a 16 year old. <laughs> would be my right. son. It would be my kid. Yeah. <laughs> who, who looks at that principal yeah. is like, that's you, dad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm like, all right. <laughs> Have you seen that? I need to make sure everything's good for you. <laughs> yeah, Have you you're s- right. <laughs> Have you seen that meme that's like, I lived it. I watched a movie from my childhood and I agreed with the parents. Mm-hmm. That's I put, no, oh, I put no. Devastating. I posted that, Mika- yeah, yeah, Michaela. Yeah, it's uh, devastating like, when it happens. Like, oh, I watched yeah. the thing and I related to the parent yeah. who was just saying, yeah. just like, yes, I agree. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, but that's parent- just a getting older thing, too. Yeah. Yeah. Parents that's do have to step in every thing, now and yeah. again. And I think, you know, there's a thing, too, about uh, <laughs> the 80s when um, they, whenever they had like, the adults seem like what I remember as being adults. You know, yeah. they right. lounge in their in their yes. uh, yeah. uh, well appointed homes, yeah. and they which the is guy, what I do all the time. He, yes. the, the principal wears a full th- uh, three piece suit, oh, suit with a Dude, vest, vest, and I okay. he he's sweating his. Did ass he have off. he had little uh, pocket uh, watch? <laughs> did he have a pocket? Oh, think, did, did you guys? Over did you guys grow up think, <laughs> Did you grow up thinking when you hit a certain age you'd have to stop wearing like t shirts and stuff and just have to start wearing like adult clothes all the time? No, because I thought. I, I was with that. I, I actually I thought that when I, I was younger, that for I'm a like, long time. Yeah, well, not that I would have to do that, but I, I became aware that like, well, when I get older, like I'm not gonna, you know, where the, the girls I, that I know are not gonna suddenly start wearing beehive hairdos. Yeah, because they have to. It's like our when we get older, we're gonna look different. I guess I just okay. thought like there okay. was there came <laughs> a point in time where you're like I'm not interested in wearing my graphic tees anymore. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but right. I thought I that have, that was part of like okay, growing no, up. I, it that uh, switch would flip. You know, I have many thoughts on this. Uh, first of all, he went to beehive haircuts, <laughs> which I'm sorry, Colin, <laughs> but ages you a little bit. <laughs> well, I remember all just the a bit. all the but like also, teachers had beehive hair. But also, uh, older people I, did. But I have gone to that thing. I'm just like I can't like if. But also, I'm single and I'm older so I'm trying to attract a certain people so if I go out wearing a graphic t-shirt I, I don't guess, think okay. it will you know, so like there is that yeah, thought I I mean, as much as we want to as much as we want to fight against <laughs> it it is a thought that us older generation yeah. will have so uh, yeah. it's it's there. And younger people, the older you get, the you're so willing to go out in public ugly. When you get ugly. older, they don't are give a so shit willing anymore. Yes. Yeah, don't they are so anymore. willing to go out in public just fucking yeah. ugly. Yeah. But they're also not worrying about the other end of that. Yeah. They're not trying to attract anybody. They don't yep. give a shit. Mm-hmm. So and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But when you are trying to be like, yeah. ah, I'd like to attract some birth of the opposite well, side. And, but in, in in I guess as it relates to this, it's like did did we seed our our generations seed like that uh, uh the appearance of authority because mm. that's what the principal Maybe. and the cop mm. have by being fully dressed yeah. showing up to you know it's like mm-hmm. what principal but, in a high school today shows up in a three-piece I was suit gonna say, but right. what era that's what i was <laughs> yeah. gonna ask him like yeah. this feels way yeah. back in the day because no i uh, no principal mm-hmm. from my era or even a little earlier would show up in a three-piece suit I, I think, think there's a psychological thing that I always read. I read a thing, uh, you know, because Alfred Hitchcock would always show up on a movie set and always mm-hmm. be wearing a suit. Mm-hmm. And so he was he was Mr. Hitchcock. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi and uh, Christopher suit. Nolan. Yeah. They, they always yeah. they wear suits when yep. they're, uh, you know, I, so it's I, like I, uh, personally. I but like you look it. at Spielberg. My God, that dude's wearing a hoodie and a baseball. Yeah. But but he uh, I mean, whatever you feel about Spielberg, he earned it. Yeah. I mean, but I feel like meant, he always dressed that way. Though. John that, Carpenter that, that, directs that in made, sweatpants. Right. Yeah, you know, that may it's like true. I mean, all right, <laughs> yeah. all right, but you gotta know if you know. I know. John yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I, and, you know, Spielberg, I think earned it at a certain point. I don't. Uh, well, what, I, mm-hmm. what do I know? Mm-hmm. Um. So there's um. Pardon me. The uh, so the, the the screws start to tighten. The mm-hmm. evidence is mounting against the yes. kid. Right. The They're dog. Finding... The dog dig, digs up the foot. Dog that he buries. Uh, uh, the cops are becoming more suspicious, mm-hmm. like because Edward Furlong is showing up at crime scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, this happens a lot in even modern movies, where you're just like your main character keeps showing up at crime scenes, yeah. and you're just like stop, dude, stop doing to that. Crime <laughs> scenes. Like, Stay stop home. Like you know you're getting there. Yeah. Stop doing it. There was a, a a scene where the principal is ultimately killed is during like mm. a uh, police search sequence that oh. materializes out of nowhere the mob action in this movie this action. the this 
this movie has like a weirdly fascist tone to it that I did not expect. But the cop, the town cop, uh, Franklin Jail is like, I need you all to get, grab your guns and go no, out No, no, he the woods. says specifically, if you go out there with guns, he had a whole speech yeah. that's hilarious all right, all right. about he if you know, do, I'm going to confiscate he the gun. know better. Even if it's a water gun, you're, I'm arresting yeah. you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but they're what, all what standing there with yet? guns while he's saying this. So it's clearly like not Lincoln dirty. and I, like, not I will. Okay. But they do right yeah. after yeah. that, they um, all have like, rifles. But we've seen... Every movie before this is just like the mob you recruit for the town yeah. is going to grab their shotgun. They've you know? been waiting for this moment. They've been waiting for this what? moment. Yes. What? What moment were they waiting what for? They, to kill they... Ted Hollister in yeah. the middle of the town square <laughs> like, at Halloween 4. But Halloween... in this, then you're going out at Michael Myers is out there. we got to get him. Yeah. In this movie, there has been, as my count, <laughs> two murders <laughs> yes. that happened yeah. a couple of days ago. But yeah. Colin's the first two murders. Okay, it's a big deal. Ever, ever. ever. And yeah, the yeah, murderer yeah. is just running around. Well, actually, it turns what out he is. But for? I mean, what are they looking for? What do they think they're looking for? We did I right, miss this, or did, was no, it not no, in the movie? Right, because it, it wasn't yeah. in the movie. It, it yeah. feels like it's one of those. Uh, we're gonna get everyone together. We're gonna search this field for evidence. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make sense for because they do it they in the middle of the night. Any leads, right? They don't know what they're looking for. Right, we don't know what we're looking for. There's nothing that says anything is out here for us to look. Yeah. But yet they're yeah. chasing Edward for long. Right. Well, only because he, he is trying to cover he, up the clue. He can't stop showing, showing up. And ends up, yeah. you know, up running into their into their path. But yeah. yeah, it was like a really weirdly manufactured yes. and engineered yes. set of circumstances yes. where you're like, I don't really understand what's because, happening here. Because I, this is uh, Andrew Kevin Walker going, I want this movie. Yeah. And I want it, and, and so he's forcing it into this movie. Yeah, until he could get that movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, until I can get a movie that will make these situations for me that I want to, uh, that I want to happen. I'm going to force them into this movie, even if it makes no sense. The girl next door wow. sees Edward Furlong coming home. The girl next door is also uh, Macon Blair's sister in the movie Blue Ruin. That's a good movie. It is. Mm -hmm. well, what I was going to say, which you should all go out and watch yeah. Blue Ruin. The director of uh, uh, Jeremy uh, Green Sonier. Room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, watch Blue Ruin. Watch Green Room. Yep. Mm -hmm. Also a great movie. Don't watch anything after yeah, that. That, uh, that Netflix thing. Yeah. Right. You're, what you're, what you're, does yeah. he do after that? Oh, I was with well, Jeffrey Wright, and it was. Bad. It was I looked bad. forward to that good. movie, yeah, and too, it was and bad. It wasn't good, but he no. did specifically. He signed like a thing for Netflix, like I'll make movies for you. But it's just like, oh, gross! There well, so they're not going to be good movies then. No, it yeah. wasn't good. But no, Blue Ruin, Green Room, fantastic. Yeah, they're great. Movies. That Go was like those. the announcement of a new talent. It was, and then yeah, we, yeah he no. directed two episodes of True Detective Night Country. Yeah, I, yep. Oh, yeah, did that's did, what he's doing oh. now. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Anyway, th because she has seen him, Trickster shows up. Yeah. It's amazing how Trickster. little we're talking about uh, Trickster. Right. How little in we're talking about in the movie the Brain Scan. He, he takes up a lot of this movie. Because there's uh, 90s Maybe era computer effects, uh, mm. you know, uh, that, you know, when he comes out of the I television. The morph, the morph yeah. happens <laughs> where, the, you know, the two characters morph together. Their faces yeah. are stretching. Yeah, it's bad. There's also that, that tunnel. Yes. Uh, effect the key, the CGI tunnel effect that you recognize from like Hideaway or Spawn yes. or yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, it was like but, but I'm, oh, I'm gonna say words. It felt like a flesh tunnel where we yeah. Were, yeah. we're just moving through a like a vein. Yeah. People are a falling vein through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so Trickster determines that uh, she has to be killed, and this of course creates a moral dilemma because I love her. Right, Edward right. Furlong says, and I'm like, e d "Do you what? Right. Why? Why? Like, you okay. haven't really talked to her right. all that much, right? We're we're, we're he's we're emotionally very, unavailable. Fuzzy, the right, whole we're <laughs> she's like I'm, calling after him. He's like, I'm not even going to answer you. No, just we're very fuzzy on what this relationship is when when killing her comes into question. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we're like, how how does he feel? But how should we feel? Right about him doing this? It's just like, eh. mm -hmm. and it culminates in a scene where we're going to have to play out this moral dilemma because he sneaks into her massive bedroom. Mm -hmm. Everybody has massive bedrooms in this movie. Bi oh, lovely big mm -hmm. bedrooms. I love it to kill her wow. um and 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 he refuses yep he does he gets there he is uh at this point he has been um they, uh, they morphed they morph he has been yeah. uh well, i think uh, they morph because he refuses right he refuses and so trickster is like i'll get in yeah yeah because i think he stabs trickster 
right? He does. And then yeah, the trickster does. grabs him with his intestines. Oh, yeah. There's a whole, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he's he got his whole head. arm into him. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, ah, and yeah, yeah. So trickster's motive, right? The, the game's motive. This is what... Th- we're getting out of this, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. It's uh, by playing the game, we're going to indulge your fantasy. Your fantasy is to become a murderer. You're going to do that. You're going to cover your tracks and all this. But this is ultimately, you're going to kill all your people that you love and that you're friendly mm-hmm. with. Uh, but ultimately, this is a terminal kick. And it's because, right? Because of your mother. So we're working back the theme. <laughs> yes. Like Because your mother died yep. and you've been so torn up about this, it's a pressure point that Trickster keeps on. Because your mom, blah, 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 mm-hmm. you're going to join her. I want you to die right, right. I, and kill yourself. It's not. But the thing is, he's not like a supernatural entity, like a demon, where I want your soul. Right. And somehow you're going right. to come in. It's just, I want to kill you. Because that would that's how I win the game. Right. Yeah. That's the villain the, yep. the boss is yeah. objective. Much. very game. Mm-hmm. Yes. But he refuses in the end, as we said. And so Trickster then goes like, Well, fine, I got a cheat code and I'm just gonna eat you and become you. And then I'm gonna kill her in your he body. Does. He but does even eat, that doesn't he, happen. He does eat him. <laughs> very uh Freddy Krueger like he like ah and eats him. Yeah, but Freddy Krueger they had to do it with like rubber and plastic and stuff. This is CG. This is all and it, and it, it looks uh, 10 times better. Mm-hmm. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> no, no. Shut up. No. Yeah, this era of uh where we just discover this technology yeah and whether it looks good we'll apply wasn't it wasn't virtuosity it. right around the same yes. time yes. yeah like yeah. this is the era like there was yeah. a good three four years in the 90s mm-hmm. where this was just it's like, 10 we're years gonna do this. it's yeah. the 90s whether it's good or not we're gonna do it yeah it's it really bad i yeah. mean trying to watch this era's movies now yeah. that contain computer effects is yes. like they don't age well. It looks no. fucking like dog shit. I mean, yeah. it's horrible, horrible stuff. Um, yeah. But Edward Furlong still has the, uh, he still refuses to, wait, what actually did happen? Oh, wait, I'm forgetting. So I know he, he has trickster eyes. Oh, yeah, he refuses he gets, again. Because yeah. she's then, yeah. like, I love you. Mm-hmm. Right, because he is, he's me. got the scissors. He's got the eyeballs of trickster. Mm-hmm. And he, he is coming up on her in bed. He's like... But then she convinces him of saying what you're saying is like, I love don't you. Don't kill me. This mm-hmm. is the reason. Yeah. And so a moral dilemma has presented itself. And then so Trickster just shows up externally and Edward Furlong is able to vanquish him. How'd that happen? We just watched it. <laughs> we did. I, we did. I just, wasn't there like a bolt of lightning that came in or something and then they were separated? Uh-uh. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Holy shit! Are you saying that all three of us can't yeah. remember? Oh fuck! Um, <laughs> I'm look at the page right. Oh, oh, oh! This is really bad. Uh, well, I, Colin, I don't think it's our fault because this movie does a lot of such and it's, it doesn't have any established rules that make any sense. Right? Because the movie like, literally says it doesn't have to make sense. Right. Yeah. The movie it, says it, that. Right. If we did have the rules, I could pivot off of that, yeah. but I don't. Somehow he defeats the trickster and then wakes up in his own I don't know. bedroom. Uh, Michaela is looking for this, so we will. Uh, I can't. I'm so embarrassed. Oh, it says uh, <laughs> it says at the last minute the trickster materializes and opens the bedroom door. Detective Hayden enters and shoots Ooh, Michael. Right. That's right. He, he got de- shot. The detective totally comes forgot. In and he yeah. shoots Edward yeah. Furlong. Which yes. I'm gonna say none of this. Which is kills partic- the tr- quote unquote kills the trickster. I guess right. Uh, okay. Well, this that's the, the yeah because. Yeah, yeah, because Trickster has that like you yeah. haven't figured out who I am yet. Yeah. I'm you, and you're like, what yeah, the uh, fuck? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, this is all yeah. just saying shit and fuck yeah. you. Because yeah. apparently yeah. Trickster only exists in your Dude, imagination. This is your psychology. This is within you. Yeah, fuck this you. is yeah. a video yeah. game yeah. that no. was tailored nope. to your psychology. You're the monster. So um, play video games. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I yeah. totally forgot that. Yeah. But now that you're saying you're right, yeah. Frank Flagella shows up, shoots him, yeah. and that's the end of the game. Yeah. And so he wakes up in his own bedroom. But it's actually several nights prior because it's right. the night that he put on the game in yes. the first place. Yep. And so that's where we have, instead of, so again, I have no idea what the phone call <laughs> yep. like seizure was yeah, for. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. He wakes up on the night that she's having a party next door. Then she he goes to, you know, finally actually mm-hmm. talk to her. Mm-hmm. And we get the, eh, I'm not actually going to date you. Yep. Yeah. But I have been yep. taking pictures of you like you were right. dreaming about. I'll think about it. And then we get another 
another shot of the same clip of the dog carrying the fo- foot before. Uh, well, yeah, we get... We, it's a stinger. The, the ending is uh, uh, Edward Furlong goes into... The Zephyr is all over. Edward Furlong goes into the principal's office. He's like, this is what uh, I want to do for my next horror club. Because that's been a whole thing. I don't know yeah. if we mentioned that, but that's why he got... The horror club. The horror club was banned because mm-hmm. they watched a gory movie in class. Right. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. Is, it's a horror club. What else are you going to watch in class? Right. It's a but, club. It's not like it's a voluntary thing. You right. don't have it's to do like it. like yeah. everyone coming here is, has signed up for this. Right. It's a horror club. Horror. It's in the name. It's in the <laughs> yeah. name. Yeah. But whatever. If people seem to disregard that. Yeah, but that's the, the idea that the older generation there, you know, they remember Vincent Price movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now it's the super gory. Right. Which would not be in a horror club. Yeah, yeah. 80s right. movies. And that's, you know, right. so the parents are freaking out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's where that guy, mm-hmm. you know, Froberg. Right. He met Frank Langella <laughs> is like, you know, like or, or Trickster is like you. You have Froberg and Hanley or whatever. And I was like, who the fuck is Froberg? And it was only like toward the end of the movie that I realized that was the principal. Mm-hmm. That apparently he was a major antagonist in the movie that I didn't really recognize. Apparently, yeah, mm-hmm. because and but Ever Furlong brings like I'd like to show this to the next class, and it's brain scan. Mm-hmm. It's the game. It's just like I think so like the ring. So yeah. right, he's, he's passing off like, the curse. Yeah, this game. I think you'll like it. Mm-hmm. Then he has to watch it before bum, bum, he uh, bum, lets right. them use it. So the uh, implication being he's going to go on and have a very right. bad it, trip. Yeah, it would only be driven home more if there was a freeze frame. Of yeah. fucking ever for a long going, I think you'll like it. <laughs> yeah. But that is not, uh, Michaela was talking about the most confounding. So the credits roll, right? Mm-hmm. Trickster shows up in the yeah, in the and chair and he's like, hey, right, I got yeah, this guy. Yeah. Yeah. shows up for, and which makes. It's a Freddy Krueger in there. Yep. Yeah, it yep. is. Yep. yep, you're right. And then the credits roll. And then all of a sudden they stop Mm -hmm. and Trickster goes, you forgot about something. And then we see what? The dog carrying the foot again. (laughs) And it's like, so, so what? So it did happen. What is something's bleeding over? What is this uh, setting up? Yeah. Yep. Well, see, I we forgot about something that didn't yeah, happen but, in the real but, world. But we didn't forget about it because we mentioned it when it happened. Yeah. We were like, so whatever happened to the dog and the yeah. foot? Yeah. But. But who yeah, cares? But it that didn't, didn't, didn't like, happen. It, it, it like, happened no. in the game. It didn't happen <laughs> no, in real life. Yeah. No, this shouldn't like. Wh- it's it just doesn't make any either. sense. It, it doesn't make either. any sense. It, it doesn't make sense. It shouldn't yeah. Be. I don't know. I, and you're trying to go like, well, what was the thinking for no. doing this and yeah. putting this in? In editor, like in, yeah, editor, in the in producer editing. said, put that in there. <sighs> like there are so many outside influences. Yeah. yeah. Said put that in there. So who knows? Did you by any chance uh, you know anything about Triumph releasing and put this Do out? Because I, no, I, no, I think, no one does, Colin. Mm-hmm. I think maybe I've heard one or two Triumph. other movies nope. that they've done, but I can't remember no what they does. are. But it was nope. a low, uh, you know, a mm-hmm. small company that was obviously Fair, trying yeah. to compete with and trying to make the next Nightmare in Elm right. Street. And someone bought them, and now we have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, ladies (laughs) and germs, I guess now is the time when you would like to know whether we would recommend that you watch Brain Scan or not. Now, I know that you've heard us talking, but you never know how these things are going to go. They they tend to break wild. Uh, But before we do that, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we are going to have to summon the man who starred in tonight's movie. (laughs) That would be Igor, our assistant. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. 800 555 Fear. If you want to talk to Igor yourself, yes. that is the number you should call. Is that the new avatar for Igor I right think it there? Should yeah, be. I think from now on, it mm-hmm. should be. Yeah. Um, okay, well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, or X. At Set Freak Show. Or you can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on uh, Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> Forgot to mention. So MF oh. Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Yes, uh, yes we are inducting two people from oh. uh, the movie. The first one being Edward Furlong. Oh, oh uh, bravo, bravo. Yes, uh, because he should. was in uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which mm-hmm. we did on this show. <laughs> yep. He was in Pet Cemetery 2. Yep, oh, yes, that's right. Yes. And, All right. And Brain Scan. We got him. All right. All right. 
Uh, we're also inducting Frank Langella onto the Saturday Night Free Show Wall of Fame. We did Frost Nixon. We did Dracula. (laughs) We did Dracula. We did Dracula. Um, uh, the the He Man movie. Masters of the Universe. Universe. Uh, Yeah, yeah, he's he's a gray skull in there. He's a Skeletor. Skeletor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was the other one besides er, Dracula. It was Skeletor. Skeletor. Uh, Frank Langella, and then Brain Scam. Um. (laughs) about tonight's movie mm-hmm. novato judoka writes in and says this felt like an extended episode of are you afraid of the dark yes i didn't even read that <laughs> remark when i said it earlier it does so much thank you sir he also says it feels like a warm-up for the lawnmower man yep. uh, tony bradshaw writes in and says i think this was the first movie i paused in the middle of while watching and verbally expressed to myself yeah, you just spent actual money on this. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, stay Sucks tuned. You. Uh, Steve Carney we says, uh, "Yeah, I saw it in the theater." And <laughs> right. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. Um, money spent. Money spent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve Carney says some of the techno- some of these technology based films are so bad, like Countdown, Fear dot com, and the remakes of Pulse and One Missed Call. Mm. You couldn't pay me to watch yep, them again. Yep, yep, yep. Every once in a while, a great <laughs> one comes along, like Chopping Mall, The mm. Lift. The Video Dead, and of course, The Ring. So we haven't yep, done Video yeah. Dead on no, this show. No, we haven't yet. done Video Dead. No, remember when yeah. we did Countdown, though? But we did Countdown, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. we did The Lift and Chopping Mall yeah. so, and yep, The Ring, yeah. so there you go. <laughs> um, yep. Michael Whitaker says, you got to love these early 90s movies about computers that yep. absolutely does not understand how computers work. <laughs> I love there it. There is it a delightful <laughs> charm to it's, them. Uh, yeah, there is a charm. Uh, it also seemingly plays on both video games and horror movies, turning you into killers. It's been a few years since I've seen it, so there's the overall possibility that it was entirely the point to point out how stupid that was. But to the best of my memory, that's not entirely the message they got across. Also, Edward Furlong has an AI assistant decades before Siri. That kid <laughs> should have been a billionaire. Seriously. <laughs> right? Yeah, this, yeah. this phone who, system is right. sophisticated. At this point, someone who can answer calls for him? Yeah. yeah. Millions of dollars. Yeah. He doesn't even should've have to been. say his name. He just goes, talk to me. And, yeah, and talk. Right. And uh, later hangs it up yeah which i yep. always wondered does the person you're talking to hear you say later before it hangs up it should <laughs> Feels like i it hope should. so i don't know mike miller says oh man i remember randomly watching this on one of the movie channels back in the day i heard later they kind of envisioned the trickster as a new freddy krueger but obviously <laughs> that didn't happen yeah. this one i need to revisit particularly as i've been thinking about taking a dive into some early 90s horror ahead of the in search of darkness 9094 documentary coming yes. later yep, this year yep, yep, and i yep. look forward to hearing everyone's thoughts on this one it is a good time capsule i'll say that yeah, it is very great much. Yes. 90s time capsule. Yep. Travis Legler says this is one of those movies I always remember seeing the VHS for on the shelf of the local video store. I think I've only seen it once. However, after reading about it, it seems that we have another movie where Edward Furlong has a dead mom <laughs> or some kind of mom issue in his yep. life. I don't yep. have any strong memories of this one, but something tells me after this episode I'll end up checking it out <laughs> like so many others. Yeah. Uh, he, that's a good point. Actually, yeah. I didn't even make that yeah, connection. That's at Pet Cemetery too is yeah, yeah, the yeah. same. Uh, last week we watched a movie called Sunshine. Yeah. Adam Kaler writes in and says, "I just got done watching Sunshine and I loved it. The cast was stellar. I actually connected to the characters, especially Mace. I feel this type of movie has been done so many times before, but Danny Boyle makes his shots interesting and the tension is legit. And I'm glad I saw it. And it was a bright spot in my day. Bright Thank spot. you, Holly." Yeah, see if we can do it. I liked it. Yeah, I liked that movie. Uh, Anthony Levia says, I really like this movie. While the story is not a breathtaking storyline or breakthrough, it's not original. He says, It's performed very well and the production value is high quality. It's the first time I really took notice of Chris Evans' capable acting chops. Yes, he's nothing else. Chris Evans. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm. I'm a fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, the week before, we watched a movie called Scanners. Mm-hmm. Dom Cree says, being Dom. a fan of uh, poster movie poster artists, <laughs> I always look for the artist's name hidden in the artwork. Mm-hmm. However, I can't say I've ever come across Joanne Daly, who did Scanners. Right. Yeah. Very cool. So I looked her up, and she did the uh, poster for Popcorn. Oh, that's oh, nice. a good one, too. That's a good one, too. Yeah, with the face. Yep. She did good a creep one. show. Oh, oh, wow. She's an icon. She's good. She did the initiation. You remember that yes, one? Yes, that's with, a good uh, one. Yeah, that was yeah. good, too. Uh, prison. It's like the skull nice. face, the yes. prison. Okay. And, and the video dead, which apparently uh, we should nice. check out. All right, the video she should be doing like, Yeah, no, she's good. We love I her. I want to get All posters right. signed by her. Yeah. Let's boost her. Yeah. Yeah. 
Jacob Law says, honestly, I would put, oh, he's talking about, it's a David Cronenberg movie. Mm-hmm. He said uh, he would put Eastern Promises over The Fly as Cronenberg's best film, but barely. Interesting. I think I, we were I, talking about It's a good one. Time, it's I a haven't good seen one. it. Is it good? Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I want to see But it. it's not, like, I prefer the horror, more horror stuff from Sure, him, yeah. You know? and yeah, that one doesn't yeah. seem horror, but. And uh, Lucas Accardo says, uh. Oh, he's talking about scanners. That dude can act like his head is about to explode. He says, mm-hmm. new follower from Buenos Aires, folks. Oh, Yours is a terrific horror movies podcast, and I can't believe I hadn't stumbled across you guys before since I'm constantly looking for this type of stuff, and I always get those schmucks that want to sound like they're drunk or stoned and are not funny or have <laughs> anything interesting to say. Good stuff. Oh, Welcome I love you. Aboard. I love you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for discovering us. Thank you. Well, thank you all, each of you, for writing in. We really yes, appreciate I lo- it. I love that anybody has a reaction to this podcast means a lot to me so now we're gonna go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie brain scan starting with me <laughs> i'm gonna go first tonight and, and say that i enjoyed this movie i had uh i had a good time with it uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff in this um i think we discussed it earlier about uh, you know how would you feel about coming into a game uh, where 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 you are a serial killer and what you have to do with that? Um, uh, yeah, uh, I'll recommend it. Uh, there's a lot to discuss with this. Um, yeah, I recommend it. Colin, you're All the right. only one I can go to because Kellen <laughs> brought it. Yeah, so. Um, I'm gonna be on the opposite side, side of this. Really? Sean. Come on. Yeah. No, I when I saw this in in the theater, uh, I had exactly the same reaction. This was one of those I haven't seen it in 30 years, and so. Yeah. I was kind of like, okay, well, I haven't seen Brain Scan in a while. Right. I know that people have talked about it in the yep. years since, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's kind of, they remember Trickster. Mm-hmm. I remembered Do that they? there was a character in it, Trickster. I remembered that it was a CD-ROM that uh, somehow hypnotized you. Mm-hmm. And I remembered that none of the movie was real at the end. And I didn't remember what the actual movie was about. Like th- that it was a yeah. slasher movie or like any of the plot mechanisms there. That's all that I retained uh, in the intervening 30 years. Um, so you remember, you remember that a movie didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think that that's the problem with it. You feel okay, by the okay. time you reach that conclusion, <clears throat> pardon me, it feels like the filmmakers are just going, well, fuck you. You know, nothing that you saw actually matters and the reason i guess that i feel that is because if there was a point that andrew kevin walker and again i don't know how much blame we should give the writer here i don't know how compromised this is (laughs) that's the hard part but his name is on it right as the writer so it's like if you were making some kind of argument against uh video game censorship mm-hmm. or against the idea that video game turns you into killers this video game turns you into well i mean i guess at the end <laughs> right. it's saying this is not in the movie to say that yeah it's like at the end i guess you didn't but at the same time he wants to pass he had a horrible time that no, like he wants fried his to, brain he, he, no, wants he wants other to people to suffer killer but he also wants to re- redeem you at the end at but the he gives end. it to the principal is the like i was hurt by this thing and i want to hurt you because you're my enemy yeah you know yeah. so it's like mm-hmm. okay so again I, I, I like i don't understand <laughs> like this is a failure i mm-hmm. think on uh, a lot of uh, uh on pretty much every point mm-hmm. i think trickster um you know, I mean, we have to put a lot of blame on this character. Also, the actor, I have nothing against him. Right. Uh, but, but why he's doing, is he here? But why is he here? But why is he here? Well, I mean, he's trying to capitalize. <laughs> this well, is a Freddy well, Krueger. Right, right. Yes. I know what you're are, we, are we just creating characters? Yeah. yeah. Like, all right. Yeah. It doesn't that, matter that for the movie. Doing? I mean, yeah, like I said, right. we were talking about yeah, it. And right. like, he can talk about the movie without talking about uh, <laughs> a trickster completely. But he's the reason probably mm-hmm. that a lot of people would go to see the movie and why you remember, you remember the makeup job mm-hmm. on him. Um, yeah. Okay. So I guess that's but it. Did, right? I'm saying create a character for this movie just because it was. We want to have a yeah, franchise. Yeah, everyone's right, trying because to Because we want to have a franchise. We want to have a uh, someone to associate with it. Yeah, everyone yeah, wants right. a slice of that pie. So yeah. how much money you're right, this movie's you're right, making? Right, yeah. Right. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think I was um, ultimately, I felt betrayed uh, uh, by did it. Did you? And uh, I think you know, I've long gone on the record. I think this just keeps <laughs> on. Every time we bring these 90s, 90s was the 90s. fucking worst Colin time. Colin the 90s. For, and I, I'm sorry that you guys grew up. In, in <laughs> I this, did. This, Very this much period. so, yes. Yeah, we so did. these yes. were like the ones that you were seeing. It's <laughs> the, like. The, the ones we saw. And remember, mother, yeah, the ones I know. that are burned into our brain. I Colin's was cursed because like, I, I had seen the previous decade and then went yes. into this and was yes. like, great. We got, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, 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 this and Valentine. And, you know, like just to, like. <laughs> that's that's why we're here, Colin, because we're here to learn <laughs> yeah. what led to these movies. Well, every once in a while, I hope that maybe there's one that, you know, uh, is better than I remember it. Uh, Dr. Mm-hmm. Giggles was in the Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> mean, Disturbing just, behavior. Colin yeah. It's everything. This is this is a uh, a symptom of the problem in '90s horror mm. and cinema in oh. general in this decade. Uh, There's nothing. Or, no, I mean it's it? mostly horror. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to say you can pass, Michaela. Oh. What did you think? Damn. Yeah, I. You've seen this story done better and more recently. Um, I would say Serenity is a better movie than this. I would say. Um, I would say, I, no. I would say <laughs> Serenity is a better movie than so, this. Like the Matthew McConaughey. Story? Yeah. I think it does okay. the same twist in a in a okay. better, more interesting way, in a much more adult way. This movie feels juvenile. It feels really Ooh. juvenile, and I don't really get who oh, the target audience purposeful. was for this movie. Yeah, I, what no. you think, like fifteen year old boys? Is the, yep. I don't know what it this is. Rate it is. It's Fangoria. Yeah, it's like yeah. That is, it, Fangoria. Right. The, the main characters of it. But, it's supposed to be. But the, nothing good happens to the protagonist, so it's weird to make it for them. And ha- you know what I'm saying? Like they this isn't exactly top, like a hero so worship like movie. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I, yeah, I, I think it's Existence does the same idea of much, much, much better. I would just say go watch Existence instead. Um, oh yeah. Especially because the <laughs> well, the twist at the end is the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And but Existence well, right, did but it way not, better. And, and he is of, actually but talking not a movie about fifteen-year-olds being serial killer. Like it's not. No, but it's about it's, it's about, about people killing in a video game and not knowing they're doing it until the end. Yep. Right. It's oh, the same right, twist. Right, that okay. It's the same that, twist done but way better. Not the but, comment, but, the but comment, anything else? Cronenberg's like, comment, I think, yeah. comes across. Strong, you know yeah. what his position is. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And Serenity clearly has a strong position too. Even though that movie sucks, that movie ha- takes a moral high ground that is insane. Um, yeah, I just this movie it doesn't come down really hard e- on either side. It doesn't really have anything interesting to say. It feels very amateur and juvenile. I did not enjoy it, so I'm not going to recommend it. <sighs> Well, it's a split freak show, and that means that you are not contractually yes. obligated to watch Brain Scan. Uh, next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Colin. I, Colin, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Colin, what are we watching next week? All right, so I know I just said that 90s oh, movies no. are bad. Right, I'm going to bring one anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to watch <laughs> The Prophecy. All right, okay, okay, okay. the Christopher right. Walken movie, yeah, Just, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right, They're from all right. the '90s, yeah. All right. It's been a while this. since I've seen it. Oh, okay, well, there was a history. Though. Oh yeah, we'll get into it. Right. Right. Yeah, okay. there was a bunch of these. All right, yeah, yeah. good. This is something uh, we should explore. All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.